Good morning, Oroville, and the whole wild world out there. Krishna Mackenzie here, sharing with you this road back to nature, exploring our relationship with where our food comes from. And today I want to talk to you about uh, weeds. So recently, about uh, a couple of months ago, I started working with Nina Sengupta, who is a very well-known figure in Oroville. She is the queen of weeds in Oroville. And I think she's also starting a, uh, a radio show actually soon um, here on, on Oroville Radio Dix, uh, next Friday. It's going to start. And working with Nina has been such an eye-opener because my whole experience of permaculture, natural farming has, through, has been through the, the philosophy and the teachings of Masanobu Fukuoka, which is very much about a non-interventional farming, recognizing that nature's natural processes are far superior to the plow and to pesticides and to all the actions that man seems to do to nature seems to bring him away from nature because they have repercussions like destroying um, with the plow we destroy subtle structures in the soil and we expose the, all, the, all the microorganisms to intense sunlight and, and of course then, then kill them and we compress the soil under the weight of a tractor so although this looks like an intelligent you know practice technique of farming it's actually destructive and because it's destructive then we need to you know compromise and 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 do things to 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 make up for the mistakes that we've done so there's a great foolishness in that whereas if you look at nature in nature the earthworms are the plow and the roots are the plow and the less we weed the less weeds there are the less at least dominant weeds, because when the soil is very impoverished, then we start to have these very pioneer weeds with very intense root systems that are very hard to get out and you spend all your time trying to weed the land. But when you stop plowing and the soil takes on a, a much more diverse new, um, like a makeup of, of life in the soil, then the structure of the soil changes. And because the structure of the soil changes, thus the types of weed that populate the soil, they change and they become much softer weeds, which are easily removed and, and can just even in many cases just be chopped and dropped and be returned as mulch. So that just gives one example of how nature is really superior. And... What I've seen with the, this work on valuing the edible weeds in Oroville is such an eye-opener because it goes even one step further in that valuation that there are so many weeds that grow. There's no plowing. There's no weeding. There's no sowing. There's no watering. There's nothing much to be done. And yet, if you start to explore these weeds, you see, wow, they're in abundance. Now... This last few weeks, I've been doing these videos with Nina for the crowdfunding of her reprinting her amazing book, Edible Weeds and Naturally Growing Plants in Oroville. It is actually, it's actually a coloring book, and she has two more um, editions in the series that are coming out, which are on medicinal weeds and edible flowers. So... We've been doing these YouTube videos a few times um, a week in the mornings, and the first one we did was on the wild passion fruit leaf. So the wild passion fruit as a plant. So we looked at the, I was familiar with the plant. You know, I know the plant. I know all these plants. And because I've sort of lived here and I kind of know them, you sort of, you think you know them. It's like you think you know that guy who lives next door because you see him every day. But did you actually take time to find out what's in his heart, what's in his mind? Did you know that he's a, you know, an expert on, I don't know, God knows what, you know, but he, do you know his passions? Do we take time for something? Time is our currency. So by going with Nina to the field, by going close to this wild passion fruit, she showed me the fruit first and I, I think I've eaten it before, but she showed it me much more consciously and I taste it and it's so delicious. It's amazing. And it has this lovely, um, they're called brackets. They're like 
They're like hands, green hands holding the fruit. And then she showed me the leaf. And she said, this leaf can be used as a salad. So I tried the leaf. Said, wow, that's very tasty. That's amazing. So the next day for our basket service, when we are harvesting, the, when we are pro- harvesting all the produce from the farm, we're making these baskets, which people pay uh, in advance for. And one component of the basket is a, is a salad kit and another component is a spinach kit. So the salad kit just has a diversity of salad greens in it. So we added this wild passion fruit leaf to the salad kit. And the response we got from people was really amazing, how much they liked it. And this was something that's been there all the time. In, as, it, as Nina's words are, it, they are here and now. You know, they've always been here. But... We're too blind to see them. So that has become a staple now in the salad kit. And it's free and it's there and it's always there. And then we explored a plant called the Gangetic Primrose or Chinese Violet. I think the local names are rather sort of arbitrary. They, you know, if you go to village to village, you can even, you can see a lot of variation in local names. But this um, Gangetic Primrose is a weed that has such a, delicate and tender crunch to it, very lovely taste. And it sort of populates itself. It makes like this colony inside the gap between two banana trees. And it has these lovely little white flowers, which, if I'm not mistaken, are also edible. And a number of times I've been uh, with the garden uh, community garden project that I'm doing, I've gone to people's houses and I've said to them, you know, you really should explore the weeds. And I've turned around, I've seen that plant. I've said, look, try that leaf. And boom, they've eaten it. And they go, wow. And I, and I think what happens, is they sort of wonder why they're trying to grow carrots. You know, they wonder why they're even bothering trying to grow big palak spinach with big leaves when they have this beautiful leaf just growing everywhere around them. So this leaf, we also started harvesting, and it's also part of the salad kit now, along with the rosella that we already were giving and the chicken spinach that we, were, that we already were giving and a few other bits and pieces that were already there as components. And again, people are so amazed by it. They, they think it's wonderful. Then there's a third leaf that uh, Nina introduced me to, and again, I know it. I mean, I've been farming for the last 27 years here in Oroville. I know it. And this I know it is actually an arrogance. It's an arrogance that says I, I, I know everything and I don't need to be told. But actually, we don't know. Okay, you know the face, you know the, you know the color, you know the shape, you, you, but do you know it? So this plant is a cousin of the amaranth and it's called purple joyweed or Brazilian joyweed. Um, the Latin names, you really have to um, watch and listen to Nina's podcast and her, her live radio show on Friday here at Oroville Radio. But the, the common names, Purple Joyweed and Brazilian Joyweed, are of this absolutely delicious purple-colored uh, amaranth that's so sturdy and so hardy that goes through a summer, no problem, Comes a little rain and pop, 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 pop. These tender little leaves start um, coming out. And you can have it raw in the salad or you can cook it. And that also has made an appearance in the spinach kit. And there's another weed, which is again a a cousin of the Amaranthus family. And it's, um, this one is crazy prolific. In the farm, it's growing everywhere. And it has these little white flowers. They're a bit like if you're familiar with the, the um, mother's names that she's given to the flowers. This is a bit, a bit like immortality. And I think it's called, yeah, I'm not quite sure the name. I think it's integral immortality or something like that. But um, it's an amazing uh, spinach, again, that's everywhere. So when the ladies are harvesting in the morning, I say, don't forget to bring that one in. They bring like a huge bucket of it in and you can eat the flowers. I think it's a good diuretic and good for, 
I don't know, I'm not quite sure, but there's so many medicinal values for all of these plants. It's You really have to research it yourself. Like I tell people, don't, don't say Krishna told me. Go on Google, find the Latin name, write it out, research it, ask Nina, you know, ask questions. She's got a beautiful Facebook page called Edible Weed Walk and a YouTube channel called Edible Weed Walk, which is really worth um, checking out. And uh, and find out those values oneself. I think that's really important. I know the gangetic primrose is very good for asthma and it's very good for all sort of bronchitis and the lungs because there's a certain chemical in it and that chemical is well known for having value for the for the lungs. So in this last couple of weeks, these four plants all of a sudden have become regular you know characters in our in our in our cafe and in the basket service enriching people's diets enriching people's health adding one more component of diversity to their food and tastes and quality and color and it bringing income for us as well bringing value to our society by simply valuing something that was all ready there so that really is an eye-opener for me Nina says it's um, I think she calls it the ultimate organic you know <laughs> it's the ultimate organic because it's just there and there's nothing to do and it's always been there it's been there in the past it's there it's in here in the present it's in the past it's part of traditions traditional recipes but in the future, we can develop new recipes, create new traditions with it. So it's from the past into the, in the present, into the future. And it's so important that this knowledge comes alive in our community. I, I, I have a vision of Oroville schools having a class once a week where every student goes with Nina's book, and identifies plants, harvests plants, has a chance to make food with those plants and eat it. And, you know, and from that book, then there comes a biology class, an, you know, ecology class, botany class. There comes an art class, coloring the, using the coloring book. There comes, maybe even a poetry class comes out of that. Maybe a little film class emerges out of that. Or... Who knows, kids giving, making little YouTube videos explaining to other kids the, the importance of this plant and, and its qualities and nutritional medicinal values. So I see education, education emerging from this knowledge as well as nutrition. And most importantly, I see a reconnect to Mother Nature. It's a sensitivity to this planet and thus to each other and to all life. And that sensitivity is, I think, at the very root of a renaissance of well-being in our in in on in this world between us in society as as well as you know on an ecological level. The crowdfunding is aimed not just at people giving ten dollars and getting a book. The crowdfunding is actually aimed at this vision where people would sponsor a school to maybe get, you know, uh, all three books or maybe a few copies of each of the books and then have a couple of the teachers come every month to Oroville, to Nina, to, to have a training of how to value this book and how to use, the, how to use this book to create uh, a syllabus, to, to, to create a content um, in their in their in their school in their in their classes, how to bring that into their curriculum. So actually, when people are contributing to this crowdfunding, they're actually contributing to a, a vision of a road back to nature through valuing edible weeds in the society and education. And we're going to start that crowdfunding hopefully sometime in I think probably in September. It's a huge work. It's really a huge work. So if anyone's out there who has any ideas and, and can offer any help and time and contacts, or if you have a million dollars, you know, just let us know. 
because it would be so wonderful if we could get this book um get these books printed and for nina it's really important not just to make a cheap version of this book for nina and i'm i don't i mean saying for nina it seems silly it's i completely agree with her she has got this book made with hand made paper it's even the binding is done with 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 cotton threads and there's no you know this is completely natural material and when you hold it you feel like you're holding something precious and then there's the the interaction of doing the coloring and there's a little pop out um color manual as well where where you can see a bit more clearly the colors of the flowers and some of the seeds and the leaves so it's really an artwork this isn't about making something cheap and quick this is about uh, it's about investing and we should invest we should invest into this type of education this shouldn't be a a shortcut sort of thing i think um her vision needs to be honored her work needs to be honored and what better way and than getting this to every kid in in the schools in oroville and in this bio region So thanks for sharing with me this week. Uh go to Edible Weed Walk on YouTube and many of these plants that we're talking about are slowly being represented by in videos that Nina has been doing. I've been doing them with her at the beginning, but I think other people are also going to join her. And also the Facebook page which is Edible Weed Walk which there's a lot more content to because the YouTube videos we've just been giving once a week but the I think the Facebook's been updated every day and Instagram is also Edible Weed Walk. So check it out and I look forward to speaking to you next week. You take care. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm.